What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be taking our very first flight with the new DJI Matrice 30. Now this is DJI's newest entry to their Enterprise drone lineup, and as I've mentioned in my previous First Thoughts video, I think that this is going to be the new go-to drone in the commercial space because of how much great technology they could fit into such a small and portable form factor. Now if you remember in my first flight and setup video of the M300, I showed the big cases that the drone, batteries, and camera were stored in, and we walked through the process of building the the drone. When you took the Matrice 300 out of the case, you had to build the drone in order to fly it. You had to attach the landing gear and attach the camera, which takes up time and more importantly, space. That drone is very big to be carting around and setting up all day. Now don't think that the smaller M30 here fully replaces the M300. That larger drone still has a place in DJI's lineup. The H20T is still a better camera than the one here on the M30T. It still does relatively the same thing between both of them, but it does have better specs it has larger sensors, it gives you the ability to zoom in further, so there is still a benefit to using the H20T over, say, the M30T here, and also you can carry heavier payload, so you can carry the P1 and the L1 on the M300, whereas on the smaller M30 here, you wouldn't be able to do that. In fact, the payload here is fixed. You can't take this camera off. So I think that the M30 is going to be a great option for somebody that's doing everyday photos and videos with the thermal camera, with the zoom camera, and the wide camera, but again, if you need something that's more powerful, you'll still look at the M300. Now, I feel like showing a setup portion of this drone in this video really isn't necessary at all because you basically take the drone out of the case, unfold the arms which lock into place, turn it on, grab the remote, turn that on, and then you're up in the air. This is very similar to the Mavic drones, which means that the setup time with the M30 is really no greater than the Mavic 3 or Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. It's just a little bit larger, but with that extra room, there's a lot of great features that DJI was able to fit in. These features we will of course cover in some future videos a little bit more in depth, but as for today's video, we'll be taking our very first flight here with the Matrice 30, and I'll be giving you my first impressions. Now, I feel like the drone is small enough where I could just take it off from my hand, but I feel like for the first flight, it's probably better off to take it off traditionally from the ground. So let's go ahead, prime the motors. Sounds just like the M300. Just a little bit smaller. Awesome. And yeah, as for the setup time, much quicker. All right, so as per usual, we'll flip it into sport mode and tear on down the water, down the river. Man, this thing just feels so powerful. <laughs> and it pro you know what? Let's see. Feels a little bit more nimble too than, say, the M300, just because it's a little bit smaller. Now we're really getting crazy. All right, focus. Fly down the water here. Now, this remote controller is big, it's huge, it's massive. And uh, I think it's going to take a little bit of getting used to here. But I also think that it gives you like the power of everything that you could ever need drone related in your hand. Like there are so many custom buttons and switches on this thing that you could do anything with, you know, a, a quick little, uh, a quick little motion. I mean, I'm able to quickly toggle between zoom and then infrared. And then uh, if I go back to the zoom, I can quickly zoom out and then I can quickly zoom in and zoom in and I can quickly flip to FPV or back to M30T. Um, I mean, this is really great. So we'll go ahead and bring it back a little bit closer. We've also got some pretty high winds today, I will say. So it's going to be interesting to see how this drone fares, which I don't think it's going to give us any issues whatsoever. Now, we are using a brand new version of the Pilot application. So this is Pilot 2 compared to Pilot 1, which is used on the M300, as well as the uh, Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced with the older smart controller. But here, we now have Pilot 2. So it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, I can tell that it still is a pre-production or pre-final version of the firmware. Um, but again, I mean, in terms of the layout, I just kind of started digging through some of the menus and it's really easy to find things. Everything is really easily laid out um, and everything feels intuitive. So let's go ahead and test out the zoom because the zoom isn't gonna be as far as what we'd get on say the H20T, but we can still zoom in pretty far. So we'll go ahead and flip over to the zoom. I'd like to zoom in on the clock tower here. We'll try and see what time it is. <laughs> we'll go ahead and zoom and zoom and zoom man look at that we are so far away too whoa okay hold on <laughs> that's the one thing is when you zoom in it's hard to control oh boy here let's let's control with the pan we'll, we'll pan the gimbal rather than try to move the entire aircraft so we'll zoom and we'll zoom man look at that <laughs> it's 215 guys <laughs> 
That is awesome. All right, and just to give you a frame of reference, I mean, how far away we are. Whoa, all right, hold on, I'm going all crazy. I mean, to give you a frame of reference how far away we are, hit the wide camera, and you really can't even see that clock tower, so that is impressive. We've got up to 200 times zoom. So we'll go ahead and zoom out, back that out, fly a little bit further back. Oh, you know what? It was probably going crazy too because I'm in sport mode. So that's probably another reason why. <laughs> All right, so from here, we'll go ahead, flip back over to the zoom camera and punch in. We're what? Uh, how far away are we? Can't see that particularly. Look, there we are <laughs> with the big remote controller. Awesome. Let me flip out of sport mode here to get a little bit better control. Ah, that doesn't give you better control. <laughs> All right, let's stop messing around. Go back to the wide camera. We'll go ahead and recenter ourselves here. Ooh, you hear that? She's got a new voice. She's usually very robotic. Awesome. So this drone feels a lot like the M300, which is a great thing because the M300 is DJI's most powerful drone. It's an absolute beast. <laughs> feels great. I'm so obsessed with continuing to check out the zoom camera that we're gonna just do it one more time. And, and then we'll move on from there, I promise. So we'll put it up and over these buildings and let's see if we can zoom in to see good old William Penn's statue. All right, we'll stop here. We'll hit the zoom. We will punch in. Some of these are still in Chinese. Punch it in. Look at that. How far are we, we're at 80X? We can go even further, 160. A little bit hard to control from this far out. Yeah, that is, that is just amazing. Let's look down and see the tower. Look, is it the best quality? No, but being this far away and having the ability to see is really incredible. I would say maybe 200X is a little bit too far. I'd say maybe max out at like 80X and that's gonna give you a pretty good looking image, but still super impressive. And look, the wide camera, look how far away we are. We're probably, five, six, seven miles away from the city. So that is really impressive. Uh, we'll recenter everything. Recenter now, when I first got this remote controller in my hand, when I first started flying with it, and really when I first took it out of the box, I thought it was gonna be the greatest thing ever. And quite frankly, it is. But I think it's just gonna take that getting used to phase because I'm not used to my hands being as far apart as they are right now using this remote controller. Typically, they're tighter together on a smaller remote controller. So that's the one thing that I'm trying to get used to. Now. We're flying here, oh, we're gonna flip back into, oh, we are in sport mode. Um, we're flying here during the day, so typically you wouldn't probably be using the thermal camera at this time of day, but I do just wanna show you the thermal camera here on the M30T because it does give you a really high resolution. Look, it's a 640 sensor, of course, um, and in some future videos, I'm definitely gonna be putting this to the test compared to the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and the M300's H20T camera, so that's gonna be cool to kind of see how they fare against each other. We are also fighting a pretty nasty headwind. So the wind is coming from downriver and uh, we're getting about 30 miles an hour for our, for our top speed. The top speed on this drone is 50 miles an hour, but we're only getting about 30 fighting against that wind. All right, so let's do like, I guess, say a mock roof inspection, if you will. If you're gonna be say, looking at these AC units here. What's great about the zoom camera, and I showed this off in my M300 video, is that we could just kind of sit here stationary, we'll put it into normal mode, and then from here, we could switch over to our zoom camera, and rather than fly down in towards these different heating units or air conditioning units, we can just continue to zoom in, and I mean, look, you'd be able to read the text on the side here once it fully focuses. So, I mean, again, you know, we're far away from the AC unit, we don't have to be directly on top of it, so it makes it easier for us as somebody that's gonna be flying, and it also makes it just safe for the gear because we aren't gonna to want to, uh, we're gonna to have to fly close. <laughs> I almost lost the controller there. It's too big to hold with one hand. All right, now let's zoom all the way out here, switch back over to the wide camera, and then we'll switch to the infrared camera. Now, of course, we've got a couple of different palettes that we can use, and being my first time using this pilot application, let's see. So we can do side by side, which is great. Calibrate the FFC, and I'm just wondering here if we can change our color palette. So there we go. These are all the color palettes we're used to seeing. I typically like using white hot, in my opinion. That's just the best for what I found. And the resolution is really great on this camera. It's showing us uh, our maximum and our minimum temperature within this predefined area, which we can actually make larger. So from here, it's gonna show us the average temperature. It's gonna show us the minimum temperature and the maximum temperature, which is really great for just logging information. And I'm sure that you guys are gonna be able to see 
the video much better on your screen in the full resolution than I am here just looking on the uh, on the remote controller. But the remote controller is great. It's got a nice seven inch bright 1200 nit screen. Let's minimize the FPV camera here, can we? There we are, minimize that and we'll minimize the map. There we are. Yeah, so it's really impressive the amount of detail that you can capture here with the thermal camera. There we've got somebody pulling up. And look, you can even see there was a car sitting there originally. Awesome. All right, let's flip back over to wide. Go ahead and zoom back down the water. Flip it back into sport mode. <laughs> this thing sounds like an airplane. So the pilot application, in my opinion, the new version is really great just because it gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of, uh, a lot of great improvements to the overall user interface. The pilot app, the older one, was definitely getting long in the tooth in a sense that it was a little bit difficult to find things, dig through menus, but this, again, I think in combination with all of the different buttons here, allow you to really change and get to whatever you need. There's still some things in here that I've got to learn too. Like I, I wonder next to the record button what this link button does here. And of course we have a lot of our camera sensors we can, or camera settings we can change. Oh, so here's something interesting. We also have the laser range finder, which it looks like is available on the left side. So if we were to turn that on, we can now see the range and how far something is away. And you know what? I really like that interface. It shows exactly the range of what we're looking at in the middle of the screen before an old pilot application it would show the range kind of tucked in the top corner but this is nice present front and center which is awesome and if we pull up the map even though it's not loaded because we don't have a connection it'll actually show you with that green dot exactly where we're pointing to so that's really awesome we'll go ahead and we'll turn that off i feel like half of this video is just me trying to, half of me is trying to figure out how to fly this drone and use it but hey, that's what these first flight videos are for. Now, I'm trying to think what else we can kind of go over in this video. A lot of the things that I really wanted to test we've done, which has been great. The flight controls are awesome on the drone, as always. Uh, it feels a little bit more nimble than the M300, so it's a little bit, a little bit more uh, agile, I would say, just because you've got a much smaller footprint. Got some commotion going on behind us. Usually this parking garage is empty. If you guys have watched some of my previous first flight videos, like there's nobody up here at all, but it's been a little bit busy today. All right, let's go ahead and take it down towards Maniunk. We'll bring it back in for a landing and that will be our first flight. Now the control interface towards the bottom is pretty interesting. Uh, this pretty much gives us a look at everything we need to know like the wind speed, which is awesome, the speed on the left side there. We can also th see um, our altitude. We can see our vertical and horizontal speed. We can see how far away we are from the home point. So it gives us a lot of great information. I like the design of it. I think it looks a little bit cleaner than what we got on the pilot app, even though the information is relatively similar. Let's go ahead and flip back over to the zoom camera. We'll go ahead and we'll zoom in. I'm sure we could read a, a sign or a license plate from all the way up here. Yeah, that is incredibly tack sharp. What is that? J, JKP6805. All right, the one thing I'll definitely have to dial in is the control so that when I'm zoomed in, it's not like <laughs> too crazy. Whoops. I see I'm all over the place right now. All right, I think, I think that I finally found out on this because I just tried it. Let's see. We'll go ahead. We'll use the zoom feature. I found out how to do the uh, tracking function. So what's really great about these drones is that, or with the, uh, with the H20T, and with the M30T here, is that you can actually use the drone to track a subject, like this one, for example. We'll tap on him, boom, there we are. And now we're tracking him, which is, ah, uh, now we're searching for target, okay. Let's pause it real quick. We'll go ahead and try to make another selection. So what's cool about this, and I'm forgetting the exact name of the feature, is look, I'm not doing anything and it's tracking that subject. It's staying stationary, the drone isn't moving whatsoever, it's just adjusting the tilt and the pan of the camera in order to keep this subject in frame. Now from here, I could fly the drone around, I could keep up with that subject, but the drone is doing all the work for me. Now we're gonna lose him around the building here. Let's see though, 
We'll try and fly upwards. Can't fly up fast enough. And we'd fly probably over 400 feet if we wanted to do that. So that is really cool. We'll go ahead and we'll zoom out. Feeling a little bit discombobulated, feeling that zoomed in. Let's try that tracking feature one more time. So we'll tap on the left side. We'll tap on this car driving towards us. And now, hands off, don't have to do anything. The drone is tracking that subject. So for law enforcement, if you have a person of interest, and if you're trying to find that person of interest or track and follow that person of interest, the drone does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Again, if this person were to go out of the frame or if they were to go behind a building, we'd then have to go and go after them. But if you can have a direct line of sight over the person, or if you're say trying to monitor traffic or something like that, like I kind of am in this situation, it's super easy. You don't have to do anything. It just continues to follow the person. So that's a feature that was available on the H20T on the M300 and of course made its way over here to the, um, to the, uh, the M30. We can even go and look at the wide camera and you can see there's a red light down there now, but as the person continues to move, we'll be able to follow them from the wide camera because the drone is using that zoom camera to follow the person. So really awesome stuff. All right, let's stop following this person. Let's stop being creepy. We'll go ahead and zoom out. Still trying to learn all these controls. Flip back to the wide camera. The wide camera is the best to fly with. And let's bring the drone back in. So we've got about 43% left remaining on both of the batteries, which is great. I mean, we've been flying now for what, about 15 minutes. And we've been fly flying pretty hard in sport mode. Let's see, if we dive down, the vertical speed is 15 miles an hour. So this drone can dive down pretty quickly, which is awesome. I mean, again, that's what makes this really nimble and agile. Whoa. <laughs> this thing, this thing moves. All right, let's bring her back here. Flip it in normal mode. There's our augmented reality, aug yeah, AR home point, which is awesome. Makes it really easy to find if you're flying around. All right, so first impressions of the M30T. Feels like an M300, but has like the agility of a Mavic 2, almost a Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. So I think that this, again, is gonna be a really great go-to option for a lot of people that are gonna be wanting to get into the commercial drone space. I can't wait after this first flight video to just continue to dive into the drone and figure out how it works. If you've got any questions or if you've got any comments on the M30T or the regular M30, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.